All right, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm just gonna do a quick overview of the front end application that we are gonna be building. I know I did mention that I wanted to build the back end first, but honestly, I think it's better we build the front end first because we already have the wireframe already and we can just easily create some mock data to kind of like render some of these things. So I think that'll be a lot better in my opinion. And then we can, and then once we set up the back end, we can just easily swap it out. So I think the best thing to do is we're going to build the front end first and then we'll go into the back end. Okay. So before we actually build anything with the front end, any, before we touch the React framework or the React library, I just wanted to go over the wireframe real quick. So that way everyone is aware of what it is that we're going to be building and what the flow is going to look like. So again, um, in terms of aesthetics, in terms of design, in terms of UI, I'm not really too concerned with that. I'm mostly just concerned with the logic and the, uh, the actual functionality of how everything is going to work on the UI. So I'm not really, so I didn't really put much effort into making the design at all, but I encourage you to, you know, build your own, uh, you know, design, des design your own uh, components. Uh, but you can also just follow the same logic that we're going to be using in order to get everything to work properly. Okay, so we're just going to have a basic login page. We're not going to have anything else aside from just, you know, a couple of login buttons and then just a simple footer. It's just very simple. Whenever you click on login with Discord, it's going to redirect you to the Discord authorization page. When you when the user clicks on authorize, it's gonna bring them to the menu page, okay? It's also gonna, you know, save a cookie to the browser so that way the user is logged in and will also allow them to log in as well. So when they're brought to the menu page, the logic that we're gonna have, have to implement on both the front and the back end is we're actually going to need to check to see if the user has specific privileges and we also need to make sure that the user is actually in these servers as well, because once you authorize, uh, if you have, as long as we provide the guild scope, we'll have all the we'll have all the guilds that the user is in, right? But we need to also check to see what the permissions that the user has in each of those guilds. Now, some uh, Discord bots, uh, Discord bot dashboards, uh, will allow you to configure the uh the, the bots uh, configuration for the server if you have at least managed server permission but personally for me i think it's better if we just allow them to have administrative pr uh, privileges um but i think uh just you know setting it to administration administrative privilege for now is going to be okay if you want to set it to manage server you can also do that as well i'm going to show you all how to check for that permission that's something that we're going to have to do on the back end so we won't do that until we actually get to the back end, okay? But uh, ultimately, once we check all of the privileges, we should show all of the possible guilds that the user can configure. So these are just, you know, obviously just wireframes. So we have four servers. If I click on one of them, it's going to uh, redirect, not redirect me, it's going to push me to a new route on the front end. So the React route is going to take care of that. It's going to navigate us to this page over here. Okay, and this page is just going to be the category page, whatever you want to call it. It's just going to show all of the categories of the configurations that you can modify. Okay, again, it's a very basic design. You can see that we have basic configurations. We have logging. If your bot has more complicated stuff, such as an economy system, such as a cooldown system, XP system, whatever it is, you can go ahead and add that here and add categories. Okay, but... Um, we're only going to set up some basic stuff. We're only going to set up the command prefix, the welcome message, and the welcome channel. And we might set up some logging as well. But that will be later on, though. Once you select the uh, the item that you want to configure, let's say, for example, if we select command prefix, it's going to bring us to this page. And this is what a simple text uh, an input field uh, could look like, right? Again, I'm aiming for the minimalistic look. We have a simple uh, input field. We have the input value. So it's going to show you the uh, the current prefix. So essentially on this page, we're going to actually need to fetch the data from the uh, from the API. And then we're going to display that in the text field. And we're going to allow the user to modify that. If they change the value from dollar sign to something else that's not a dollar sign, uh, we can enable the save button. And then if they click on the save button, it's going to make an API call to uh, the API. The API is going to update the, the configuration in the database. Uh, and then later on in future episodes, we'll set up a WebSocket so that way the API can send a message to the bot to let the bot know to update 
the actual configuration. Though I actually don't think we'll need a WebSocket because if we use Redis, um, I think we'll be fine if we use Redis in my opinion. So I don't think we need to use WebSocket. I think Redis would be a lot better. But um, we'll get we'll, we'll talk more about that when we actually get to it. So that's just the update command prefix. Let's say, for example, if we select welcome message, uh, we have two input fields. We're not imp well, so this one is actually going to be a drop down. So um, if we click on this, it should show a bunch of it should show all of the possible channels that we can select. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen that uh, option before in in many dashboards. Uh, so we'll allow the user to select a channel. And then when they select that, they can go ahead and save. They can also uh, edit the current message, which is just the welcome message. This one's going to be a little bit tricky because I'm not sure if we can get the uh, the interpolation for the member variable to work. I think we should be able to without any issues because what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be saving this as a string in the database. And then when we uh, when we uh, take this value, we're going to use backticks to to essentially uh, evaluate it. But I'm not sure if there will be any issues though. We'll have to find out. Okay, but aside from that, uh, yeah, that's pretty much just the general basis of this dashboard. Again, there's really not much there is to it, in my opinion. It's just very, really, really straightforward. Um, when we get to the actual implementation of how certain things are done, for example, how do we ensure that only the correct guilds are shown to the user? Uh, we'll do that as well. Um, and then the logout feature, access token, refresh token, all those things, we'll, we'll cover that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So again, I just wanted to make a quick video just to showcase what exactly it is that we're going to be building. Yeah, I, I have not written any code at all for the front end, so we're going to be building it entirely from the ground up. This is just the wireframe that I have. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.